Welcome back. The Senate will vote on two big confirmations on Thursday. Both the Air Force and the Army could have new leadership by this time next week. Air Force Secretary nominee Barbara Barrett and Army Secretary nominee Ryan McCarthy appear to be on their way to confirmation. Lieutenant General Tom Spohr, U.S. Army retired, is director of the Center for National Defense at the Heritage Foundation. Melanie Sisson is senior fellow and director of the Defense Strategy and Planning Program at the Stimson Center. Folks, thanks very much for coming back. Melanie, start with you. Your takeaway from the hearing on Thursday for Secretary Nominee Barrett and Secretary Nominee McCarthy. Well, I think overall it was positive for both of them. They're both clearly competent, experienced professionals. Um, and so I think the hearing proceeded in a fairly standard fashion, um, a combination of a little grandstanding and some minutia mm -hmm. um, with some interesting elements thrown in on top. What did you think was particularly interesting among those interesting elements? Well, for me, I was really interested in the question and answer to Secretary McCarthy about Futures Command and Army Modernization. Mm -hmm. I think that that organization in particular um, right now offers a view on how the United States, through the Army, thinks about great power competition, thinks about modernization, and especially about how those two things have to happen together. Tom? Your takeaway? Yeah, I thought it was a competent performance by both of them. I thought the questioning was cordial. Uh, some of it was actually in depth, so some appeared to actually you want. Sound surprised? Well, I mean, usually these things can deteriorate pretty quickly into constituent issues or grandstanding. There was actually some serious questioning, so I I, I like that. I liked Senator Duckworth's. Uh, questions, Senator Hawley, Senator Cotton, I thought they all actually seemed inquisitive about what their views on particular issues. What were the issues that you think were most important to cover that actually did get covered this time? Yeah, I thought uh, Senator Cotton talking about the use of the F-35 in Iraq, mm -hmm. I thought that was an interesting uh, point. Senator uh, Duckworth was really interested in logistics in the Indo-Pacific area. I thought that was uh, fairly uh, inquisitive. And then Senator Hawley wanted to know about Army Futures Command and what they were doing again. Seem to be serious questions with an intent to actually find out some answers. An interesting dichotomy here, in my view, because we have on, on the Army side, we have Secretary McCarthy, who has been there for a while. I think folks have a pretty good sense of what he would probably do as the Secretary of the Army. We don't know very much at all about what uh, Secretary Barrett would do if she's leading the Air Force, do we, Melanie? No, I think that's exactly right. And so it was an interest di interesting dichotomy that we had there, a very experienced sort of known quantity in McCarthy. Barrett, on the other hand, is interesting in part because her, her past, her experiences are varied and manifold. And if we know anything about her, it's that she can learn, mm -hmm. right? She can learn organizations. She can learn new tasks. Um, uh, and, and so there was an interesting interplay in terms of sort of the level of detail that McCarthy was able to answer um, questions with as opposed to um, nominee Barrett who who could give some general competent responses but not the same level of detail because of position when we see Secretary McCarthy take over if he is indeed confirmed this week as expected Tom what how much of continuing Mark Esper's work do you expect to see and how much of a new direction under his own vision for the Army do you expect to see? Yeah, I think because Secretary McCarthy was so influential in the first two years of this administration in his role as the Undersecretary that I think we'll see a lot of steady as you go. I do not think we'll see major changes. Probably as time goes on you'll see some minor course corrections, but he, he in every public appearance seems very comfortable with the direction that the Army is currently going on. The, and the Futures Command that Melanie mentioned earlier in our yeah. conversation, is that something you would expect to see become a model, not just picking on the Air Force because of the proximity of the nomination discussion, but is this something that we might see in the Navy and Marine Corps too because Secretary Esper thinks it's been successful uh, as he's kind of pushing this night court idea on the yeah, entire Yeah, I, I think that's very possible. The Air Force, for example, has already suggested they're going to look into cross-functional teams, something the Army adopted. I would not su be surprised to see the Navy and the Marine Corps go in a, in a similar direction. What do you see in what exists in the structure now, whether it's something that Mark Esper has pushed down, Melanie, or something that exists in either of these two branches that might perpetuate itself or might go in a completely different direction as a res uh, result of these two new leaders? Well, so when I when I look at Army Futures Command in particular, um, one of the sort of prima facie cases to be made is that it centralized functions that were entirely disaggregated in a way that um, militated against efficiency, mm -hmm. right? To the extent that that exists in other services, it, it would be something certainly to look at for replication. That said, I think there's a lot of unknown still about Futures Command, um, and so we wouldn't want to draw lessons prematurely, I don't think. What do you expect to see as far as the rest of these acting jobs being filled? There a, a, seems to be a buzz on the Hill that maybe the dam is breaking, and both the administration and the Hill can get their acts together and get a lot of these other jobs filled. Do you expect 
expect to see that moving forward. Melanie, you go first. Uh, I, I don't, honestly. Um, I am hesitant to consider anything a trend at this point. <laughs> um, I think in this case what we have is two um, nominees who uh, are, are unobjectionable in every sense, right? And so these are low friction kinds of nominations and confirmations. Um, and it doesn't seem to me to, to indicate any special energy um, other than that. Tom, about 30 seconds. Yeah, slightly different view. I think the Pentagon is focused on filling its positions right now. I think they're mostly looking inward to fill positions, and so they're looking for people that maybe have already gotten through a Senate confirmation to put in jobs so they can quickly fill out uh, the administration for the rest of this term. Tom and Melanie, thanks both very much for coming back.